So, tell me about Brit Hashmoni, about the, the beginning of Brit Hashmoni. Brit Hashmoni, it was preceded by, by a Brit Yishon. The very Brit Yishon never heard of it. That was revisionist. It was, it was, also, it was a religious revisionist. And the young kids also were religious children, but he used to go to the Beta, but they were not too happy in Beta because it was, uh, it was not, uh, not religious. Uh, when you, what year are we talking about? How old were you? Uh, about 15, 16. And when were you born? That way I can know what year we're talking about. <laughs> when you say we used to go to Beta, who was we? We uh, no, but then we, we then we came up something that there should be a relig- sort of a religious Beta. Mm-hmm. So it was mostly for Beta Hashmonaim, but then Beit Yishon, but Beit Yishon somehow disappeared. And then again it came up Beta Hashmonaim. So we, we were the, I was one of the four first ones to join up with, with uh, them and under the leadership under the, 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 the Pikud of um, Baruch Dovani. Baruch Dovani was the, was the Mephaked. And then there was a Mephaked Tarbuti that was Mayor Nedan. And the, the other people who were in the executive I don't remember. But uh, then there was, uh, we organized also a Kutsat uh, or Plugat Matityahu for the kids who were about uh, 12, 13 year old children. Or less than by Mitri, let's say. They were Plugat Matityahu, because if it was a bit Hashmonaim, so Plugat Matityahu, and Plugat Matityahu had different uh, uh, Kutsot, because they were Kutsat Yohanan, Kutsat Yehuda, and uh, there was also a girls uh, a group, which, uh, I don't remember what they called it. I don't remember. Okay. I'm sorry. And uh, so we were acting like we had, mostly we had uh, sort of um, uh, drilling, so uh, what did we call it? Um, not, uh, can't you remember? Uh, Inspections? What? Inspections? No. Uh, well, it's got, uh, uh, ex- like military exercises. I suppose you mean, for you mean, Kadima, for play. I don't remember these uh, things. Drills. Like, drills. Sort of drill, drills. And uh, we had cultural uh, sessions, like with Mayor Medan, who used to give us history of the Jewish people. Push it, history. And uh, that's about it. And we used to uh, go on demonstrations, for instance. And there was a demonstration from time to time, so we were participated. Uh, I remember once I was in a demonstration on the hub in the area which is now called Kikara Shabbat. Right. So when I saw British police were coming, and people started to run, I, instead of running, I turned to, going towards, towards Kula, and I walked to the side, uh, and then the policeman was gone. I said, well, I look like this, what do you want from me? And I, I, I'm just a passerby. Right. So he was, was going to hit me. Okay, and uh, this is all that I can remember about the Hashanah. Then somehow, I don't know what happened, but uh, uh, the money fell out with some of the others and then Moshe Segal took over. Was Moshe Segal in it from the beginning? Moshe Segal was at that time a uh, secretary of the Institute of Dimlo Meet. Mm-hmm. You heard of yeah. that's what was, uh, that, that's where there was his, his, his occupation. But uh, then at night or some other time, whenever he had, he used to come and run the run the Beit This was even before he took over from Dubdubani. What? This was before he took over from Dubdubani or afterwards? Before, after. So, uh, wait, how did he get attached to you guys? How, what, how did he get attached to you guys in Beit Hashmonaim? Was he part of the group? I, I don't know. Uh, he, because they knew about him, but they knew that uh, he was a religious. Guy, and so they called, somebody called him in to take over. But he wasn't with you in the day-to-day stuff for the no, first. No, no, no. So when you were in Brit Yeshua, when you were in Yeshua, mm-hmm. who, who were you with? You Brit Yeshua, I don't remember because I was too young for Brit Yeshua. I didn't even want to. I, I, I went once or twice to a meeting, but 
but we put in the last one, they, 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 dis- they disappeared, they, they dissolved, but then later in a year, later or two, came up with the Rashmanayim. Did you leave, when you left Yeshua, did you leave with anyone in particular who you remember, any friends no, who went with no, you? No, I don't remember anybody but Yeshua. And when you founded Brit Hashem, when you started Brit Hashem, I remember the, the four, four of us were the, the first four members together. We were like, 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 Where did you meet? We met we knew each other. Where did you meet? Uh, where did you get together? Where, where, where did we met? We met uh, uh, before we, before we had a place. We had in somebody's house, maybe in the Devani's house even. I, I don't remember. In my house, I know we never met. Why is that? Because it was not the place to to meet politically. It was my father was a banter, a yeshiva man, and uh, we just didn't think of it. Why was Duke Devani the leader? <laughs> Why was Duv Devani the leader? How did Duv Devani get yeah, I think he was, he was actually the, 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 the who, who organized us, I think. Uh-huh. We, we knew him from Brit, he was active already in Brit, in Brit Yeshua. But then, uh, so I, I think he was the one that we, when we were four of us, we had the same ideas, we, we, maybe we looked for a leader and we thought we should go to 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 Rivani. I don't remember the details, but I remember that after four of us came together when when the Dukovani led us to establish the uh, a uh, a Now you were four people. How did four people grow to hundreds of people? Well, once we had an organization we talked we talked to other with the uh, talked to our four friends and we 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 got involved a few more. Which I had the uh, in Batengar, I had a friend, others in the, these, the other three were not from Batengar. Mm-hmm. One of them was from the Asharim, one of them from Bet Israel. Mm-hmm. So each one brought two, three of his friends. That, uh, and how did we, the four, get together? Because, uh, why did we, how did we get together? I don't, I don't remember. But we were, four of us were old friends. And, uh, Maybe we used to meet in Beitar or something. I, I don't remember how it is. Anyway, we, each one of us, where I got from Matunga, I got two, three more. And then when one in Menachem Anita, he got three, four from Meashar. And then, so each one we meet, we became a group of about 10, 12. And 10, 12, we paid the Jews, and uh, he got some money, what's his name? He got money from somewhere. We, we rented a place in, in, uh, in Shmat Abukharim. Mm-hmm. We went to the place and then we went to the better place of a home near Asharim and some basement, big basement apartment. There was a big hall there, a big basement. Yeah. So that's where we were. We established it also as a big Knesset, mind you. Really? Yes. So when did you, we used to go there to Dalman? Yeah, Shabbos, we used to go to Dalman there. Yeah. Men Not and women. What on Shabbos we used to Dalman there? You had men and women? You had a mix of women, women or just men? There were girls. The, the girls didn't come so much to the Dalman. Because the girls were not of our age, the girls were 10, 12 year old, the, the, the boys were 15, 16. And your job was the, you were in charge of the money? I, that's what it says in some <laughs> book, but I, I don't remember. Uh-huh. Maybe I was, I don't remember. <laughs> there I met called Prague, there it's Prague. Right, right, I saw that. Maybe you knew about that, such a book? Yeah. You, uh, did you see my name in it? Yes. You did see Shmuel Prague there. It says, that, that's how you know, that's how you know about the dread, that I was supposed to be the treasurer. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when you, you, and, and what, you said you went to this rally in Meir Sharim. Say it again? You said you went to the demonstration in Meir Sharim. You called Meir Sharim once when there was some case where, where it was already in 30, 36 or 37, where some, some Arabs killed some, some, some Jews and we demonstrated against the British for they were allowing the Arabs to kill us. Did you, <coughs> did, did you um, have any other political activities or political... Like what, for instance? Did you take a stance when, for instance, Ben Yosef was hanged? Say that again? When Shlomo Ben Yosef was hanged, did you do That's anything? Right. Well, at that time, I remember all I did was go to pray in the Shuat Yaakov synagogue. Mm-hmm. There were prayers offered for him before he was hanged, or before he died, that's right. 
that's all I can remember. When you were in Brit Hashmonaim with these friends, were you out of Yeshurun and out of Beitar? You were completely in Brit Hashmonaim? We were, we were not, uh, we, we were, we were the, the, the adult organization of Brit Hashmonaim was called Akdut Yisrael. Mm-hmm. You ever hear that? Mm-hmm. Akdut Yisrael was our adult uh, uh, sponsor, sort of. Akdut Yisrael, there was an Akdut Yisrael in Tel Aviv also. It was about Israel, I think, in Poland also, maybe. Uh, so, uh, that's all. And I remember the Arabic Israel, we used to go to the Arabic Israel, was done in the old Yishun, not the present Yishun, on the Rehov Yafo, there was the Beit HaKnesset Yishun, was on the Rehov Yafo, someplace. Mm. I, if I would go with you, maybe I would be able to go, but was it? It was somewhere, you know, when you cross Rehov Yafo and King George, Going towards Machni Yehuda someplace, I think that's where it was. There's a shul there today called Achdut Yisrael. It was called the Beit HaKnesset Yishun, there was also, it was a cultural center, sort of. There's a shul on the second, if you, there's a shul Beit HaKnesset Achdut Yisrael is, is there today. There was a, a sign there, 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 there was a sign there. to Achdut Yisrael. So we used to go down there, and then uh, when we, as we grew a little bit, we, we made it, we couldn't, we, we made it a Beit HaKnesset, why did it go? Because they didn't want to rent it to us. Ah, as an organization, but as a train I would have to. Oh, it's a better place to Muadon, or something like that. So that's how we, we, we captured it. Yeah. And uh, how many people were in this group at the beginning? At the very right. beginning. The beginning says four, five, and then each one of us, but we were about ten, twelve, and then there were maybe twenty, Bissacha called Yerushalayim, twenty, twenty-five, I can't remember any more than twenty-five people. And with the kids and with the girls, maybe they were 35 you know. A couple of years later, you were hundreds of members. We probably By the, uh, a few years later, Ruch Hashmonim had been I wasn't in the country anymore. When did you leave? I went to the States. When? When did you leave? In 38. The end of 38, I went to the States. Did you leave before the Devani left and said yeah, okay? Yeah, well, then, then before the, I was always still in the Ruch Hashmonim and Moshe Sega became the day of Mufakir. What did you think of him? <laughs> Did he have a good relation with each of you? He was a very really good relationship. But he was not a politician. He didn't try to, to, to dominate. He was, he was a normal... Uh, uh, for a Jew, it was not normal to, to, uh, to, to not to try to, to dominate and to get to the top or something. He just came, came and ran the, 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 the cultural activities and other activities, whatever, and that's all. Were you at the meeting where they elected the Mifaked the RC or? I don't know. They, there was a meeting. I, I don't remember these things. I don't remember. But Duke Devani stayed in the organization. He didn't. Yeah, really, I, don't didn't he? I don't remember that either. Because I know he and Sega were friends. It was later on I learned about him that he he, he went to the Mizrahi. Duke Devani. Yes, and he became uh, involved. He was the one that was responsible for bringing the Libyan Jews here. I saw him once in America, I also saw him once. Yeah. Uh, so I gave him a compliment when he spoke, he was a good speaker. Everyone says that. He's a very good speaker. And uh, uh, inspiring speaker, I would say. When he came to America and he spoke, <coughs> it's yours. So when you saw Dr. Devani, what did you tell him? Uh, I told him the Pasuk. The Pabush Rabbeinu says, Leinos Leicho. What's the other half of the post again? I don't remember. Lecha so a novel Leinos Leicho. So that was when I went over to him to 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 say Lashakoyas. I said to him, this post he 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 liked it very much. Did he remember you from the thirties? Of course he remembered me. I used to be much a lot of time I spent in his own house, in his parents' house. Why? We, 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 kid, we used to, socially, we used to spend time in his house. Mm. Why did you leave in 38? Why I left? Because my, my, my sister, my brother, they sent me an affidavit, you call it. They sent us a, 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 a affidavit. To what? To, to come to America. So they then I went with it to the Consul General of the American and he gave me a visa. And I still have that uh, 
traveling document. But you're, you, you're, you're, you're in Beitar and you're in Brit Hasmonim. What did you have to do in America? Because I was just not getting anywhere here. I didn't know what to do here. I learned the Shire, but, but uh, then, I, then I learned that that maybe I would become a Pakid. I learned it was a Nachon Mechantil. Nachon Madae HaMishchar. Madae HaMishchar. So I learned English and a little bookkeeping, but bookkeeping didn't interest me. Uh, typing, but it didn't it, but English, just English came in handy. So when I came to America, I wasn't a winner all together already. I knew it was on English already. Yeah. They brought me then, then in, uh, and then I, in New York, I went to Yeshiva. You, you know New York at all? You read of Yeshiva Kofetz Chaim? Mm -hmm. Of course. In Brooklyn it was, in Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Yeshiva Kofetz Chaim, we were about five blocks away from Torah of Adas. You heard of Torah of Adas? Yes, of course. But my Rebbe, somehow, he, what was the name of that time of the, the head of the Torah of Adas? Medlovich, that one. Medlovich was an Ungar or something, and my Rebbe was a Slabotka. Uh -huh. So they, somehow they didn't get along, so my Rebbe went out and he established his own yeshiva, uh, at, um, uh, a Slabotka model. And, and so we were five blocks away from then. So that's where I joined, and that's where I got my... Uh, in my room, I had a room in the, in the, she in the dormitory and they, they, they had a kitchen. So uh, the, that's how I lived. And then I used to go out to make extra money. I was about three. Uh, so I used to make a little extra. So I used to make three, three, about that, that three, three dollars or four, five dollars they paid for a door reading. Yeah. And then I didn't need any more. A bottle of milk used to cost ten cents. Uh, Friday at Friday for lunch. Fridays there was no no lunch in the yeshiva, so I went out to a delicatessen. How much did we pay the delicatessen? Do you think? Can you imagine? The, 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 my regular Friday uh, lunch was two frankfurters, two uh, and, and, and a Pepsi. How much did it cost? Did you I say? have no idea. I... Fifteen cents. Really? Each cent paid for the five cents. They used to have a, on the radio. They used to announce the the by the Pepsi Cola. I can't remember the. But uh, twice as much for a nickel to Pepsi Cola is the drink for you. <laughs> nickel, 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 nickel. <laughs> so this was it, and that's how I made. I, that's how I had money to go ahead. I needed money to to the laundry to wash my shirts, and uh, so uh, to buy extra milk in the yeshiva. Your, your parents stayed here, or they went with My you? parents were stayed here. They stayed here. They didn't go. Now, when you were in New York, were you involved in any nationalist activity? Again, when you were in New York, were you involved in any nationalist activity? Or just learning and... and no. Not at all. Only at that few years I heard... I heard that, uh, that there was a revisionist organization here. In the immediate here, I say, in, in New York. So I went to see them and I uh, saw the uh, Zionist revisionists uh, yeah, at that time, they were not called Zionist Revisionists anymore, they were called Istadrut Zionit Chadasha, because Jabotinsky broke with right, them right. after, after they, they refused to announce that the aim of Zionism the was the like Jewish state. Right. And so I used to go to Pant, they had a speaker, it was announced that, they, 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 that they somehow I found out, when, so from time to time I used to go to, to, to get the uh, speeches to, 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 to uh, associate with them, to, but uh, that's about it. That's about it. And then, uh, of course, uh, I, I was not involved actively. You heard of the Peter Bergson, you heard yes, of yes. Ishmael Merlin. They had a committee to save the Jewish people of Europe. But were you in contact with them? I, they, I just, I wasn't in contact with them, but when they had a big meeting, I went. I mean, like Madison Square Garden. You went to the Madison Square Garden one? Yes, and another time they had it in another place. I don't remember anymore. It goes back 60 years, and we remembered. And, uh, but I remember that when Jabotinsky came to America, I went to hear him, of course. And two times I heard him, that was the name of that, uh, of that hall, it was not the Madison Square Garden that spoke. I can't remember. The town it. hall? Who? Town hall? No, no, it was not town hall. It was somewhere in Manhattan, but I can't remember where. Anyway, but twice, three times I went, the third time I heard him. I went to him, he was addressing a newly formed Beitar group in New York. Mm -hmm. 
I don't remember a word that he said. The one thing I remember, he explained to them the hymn of Beta, you know, the Migod Rikagon, the Afa, you're familiar with it? Yes, yes. Beta Mubeyeza, you come la Mugeza, Gaon, the Nadiv, the Akzar. Right. So when I used to hear it in the, as a youth, I was wondering, what, uh, he wants a race of the Akzar, what, what? I didn't know yet about the poetic license. That's how, but as, as a good chosid, I interpreted my way, it means that we should be as a ring to be going. <coughs> but then I heard him, and he said, proud, gentle, and fierce. Gentle or generous? What? Gentle or generous? Proud, gentle, and fierce. That is the way I heard it, my peep. Shall I, 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 Proud, gentle, and fierce. That was Azad, doesn't mean to be Azad, but to be fierce, to be... <coughs> okay, that's the only thing I remember. Lots of people came to hear him speak? There was a lot of people, yeah. It's too bad, if he didn't die, it would be different. So when did you come back to Israel? When, when did you return to Eretz Israel? To live here. To come back. Yeah. Four and a half years ago. I was here many oh, times. But in the 40s, did you come back after that? I came back the first time I was here was in 1950. Uh -huh. and when did, how did you start a connection with Eldad? How I started a connection? Because when I was there, I didn't, I was not, I was here not for, for four weeks. I was here for, for almost a year. I took a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. I had already a rabbinical job. Mm -hmm. But then I uh, and I said, let me go home for a little bit. So I came home, and my, I had a nephew in Tel Aviv who was uh, sympathetic to the, he used to get the Sunan. So I started, when I read that, that, that there's going to be a lecture, with, uh, and the uh, Israeli side is going to be the guest, so I was, I was very anxious to go to hear him. So I went and I heard him. Maybe I, there was a lecture by Eldad. Uh, by the, at that time, there was not yet Eldad was only in the underground. Right. <coughs> but he was always Dr. Shishal Shai. His Sulam papers are all, all the first one says, oh, Dr. Shai doesn't see Eldad. I still have them here. And uh, you want to see somewhere what they look like? No, no, I, I have them at home. You have them at home, okay. So you remember still that where it said it's sort of shy. Right, yeah. And uh, so I got acquainted with him, and then when I went back to America, I got myself a job, but my nephew used to send me the Sulam. Uh -huh. So he sent me the Sulam, and it showed me, there was a, 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 picture, a letter, a, a copy of a letter that Ben Gurion sent to him, why he cannot allow him to be a teacher. Right, right, right. So I had Rahmanis on him. So when we, we collected for the Maot Chitin, you know where the Maot Chitin from the Arab Pesach. So I sent him a, a, a script, they call it. I, if, with that script, you could go to this, they had stores here, where they, they this script were, were really, uh, redeemed. Mm -hmm. So I sent him about thirty-five dollars At that time, it, uh, 50 years ago, thirty-five dollars was not the bad, bad uh, amount. So I sent him for Pesach, from where I sent him, I sent him to the, so he was very, he was very happy, that, uh, so he answered me. And then next year I sent him again, so again he sent me a letter. <coughs> but this old Captain Ben Gurion, not to give it a name like Shai, but... Did you, did, you get a, did you get a chance to make me a copy of the speech you gave for your ear stern? What are you going to do with the copy? I can give it to you personally, yes, okay, fine. because I'm just playing with the idea. You see, I have it here already. To, to write another book. Oh. You see? What's, what's this one all about? What? what is this one about? This, there are different things. Different things. It's, uh, let's see. Go ahead. Nicht der dem hat Gott das Schaffen gewählt, dass ein Volk so besitzen, als ein ungeheuer viel Land, und das andere Volk so gar nicht nicht haben. Which means what? You know what it means? No, tell me what it means. 
not for this did God create the world that one nation should possess so much land and that the other nation should have nothing. Now nobody says that, what do you mean in the Palestine? The Arabs have 14, 15, 20 land, what do you mean? What, what are you giving me the story about the poor Palestinians? They are Arabs, they be in... in uh, the quote in Yiddish was uh, something that Rabbi Prager remembered listening to Jabotinsky, a tape by Jabotinsky or a record by Jabotinsky from the 1930s, and uh, that was his rendition, sounding rather like Jabotinsky. <laughs>